do hair like on a full-time basis like I saw the trend going away where people um didn't want to to get relaxers anymore and you know how the distributors would come into my shop and stuff and still try to push relaxers so um and the prices Jay used to be going up but what I used to see is that the people that still was getting relaxers um and I don't have nothing against it if you get a relaxers it was such a trauma to their hair. I don't know what oh, wow. changed, like lots yeah. of hair loss, you know. I think yeah, it's yeah. enough for um yeah. for that. And I and I think that I mean I have been natural for over 10 years. I just I just stopped using it because I just start feeling my hair getting thinner and thinner. Now my hair is thick, you know what I mean? And so I just, look, clear something up for me. Clear something up for me, Kimmy. When I hear you just said I've been all natural, so that means you're no longer using any relaxer, no, no. longer using any chemicals at all. No. That's just you washing it, putting some, you know, washing it, blow drying, and putting some grease in it. Not grease. I'm not about to use no grease, Jane. <laughs> I've been you? natural too for this long. Kim, I think it's been oh, more than ten years since I've been yeah. fourteen, fifteen years myself. Yeah. So women don't yeah. use hair grease. They have natural hair. They yeah. don't use hair grease. You you use a lot more things, Jay. Now a lot. You know what I mean? It's a oh, lot. Okay, of okay. It's a lot of you know. Um, like I know, like in the summertime, if I wanted, because the summertime is probably the best because it's more humidity on the East Coast, so I can wear my hair curlier then. But I had to train my hair to be curly like it is now because when you go from chemicals to no chemicals, you got to teach your hair to hold moisture. You know what I mean? So. If not, you're going to have right, right. Uh, you so, know, you know, this is actually an episode right here. We did it in the making. Yeah. Like, you, you're actually you doing a, a natural hair episode. Yeah, we may need to revisit that again because um, it is, yeah. really, it's really huge. So, um, I know that it's worth every minute of time that I have to spend on my hair. Um, I don't, um, Put so a lot high of, maintenance, huh? Yeah, I don't know. I don't put a lot of effort into my head at all because I oh it's not high maintenance. Oh, it okay. is high maintenance. Like if I want to wear my hair straight, I have to put a lot of effort into blow drying his head. You know what I mean? It's not like with a relaxer, it's already straight, so it's gonna dry faster and all that. But um then I you know it's the thing is I don't want to use too much heat because then I want to lose curls, you know. It's 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 a whole different mindset than what I used to have because I could care less if I had a curl in my head. I'm trying to get no curl back down. I just wanted to be straight. So um, I find myself because I go into the office now that um, I have to do more. You know what I mean? Then I'm at home because you no. Know, right, exactly. And we yeah, coming exactly. out of winter, and you know I'm I can rock a hat anytime. You know I love wearing a. A scully or something like that, but now I can't go in the office with a scully on my damn head, and you know, right? You know, I can't be an imposter. <laughs> you know, in that transitioning back to normal, normal life, uh, you 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 going back in the office, and I know someone else. They for two years Monday this Monday be their first time going back in the office in two years, and they're having so much anxiety about it. It's been, and, it's, been uh, so, it's been two years for us too, and and. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's another great episode to do, you know, post-pandemic, yeah. getting back to normal. What is normal? What is normal now? You know? Nothing. Um, one second. But she was telling me she has big time anxiety. She already like, wow, I, I'm just going to tell them I don't even want to go, you know, they're phasing it back in. She was like little by little, but uh, some people went back in December. And she's opted for it because you get comfortable. You get a lifestyle. Yes, you, you get a yes, routine. Yes, you do. And just well, welcome yeah. back because I'm a teacher. So welcome back, everybody. <laughs> everybody. Else right. Oh, you've been back. Yeah. 
Yeah, I was out for a year um, teaching right. virtual for a year, and I absolutely loved it, every minute of it. Well, I, I would say I love it because um, I start work at 7 in the morning, so usually I just have to get up like 6.30 and, you know, brush my teeth. You know, on my lunch break, I could go do my walk and then take my shower and then come and, you know, tap life as usual. Now, I'm up at uh, 4.30. In the morning, you know, mm -hmm. I work almost up near New York, New York, and so it takes me an hour. In the morning, it takes me about an hour and 20 minutes to get to work. I'd be balling going to work. Coming home, it takes me almost two hours to get back home. So, you know, it's something to get used to. And being in the office, I'm still a little cautious of neighbors in the office, you know what I mean? Because I, I hear people coughing and I'd be like, don't come over here, you know, but this is the, the new, new, get used to it. And um, in my um, organization, people are coming in once a week. Um, some people are, people are coming in once a quarter. Now, if you come in once a quarter, the whole other thing too, that it's like, you almost opt to be like a remote worker and, uh, you know, you can lose pay and things like that. So I was like, I ain't losing my money to go when I only got to come one day a week. So I don't care. Wow. And even some, you don't even have to turn on your camera, right? Like I, I work remotely a couple days a week, but, but when we have what we call our daily triage, we uh -huh. have to turn on our cameras. So okay. I know some folks that were working remotely, they're like they never turn on their cameras. So you know you you ain't you right. You just doing a bare minimum when you wake up. Brush the teeth, <laughs> wash the face, and get on the computer. You know, and get on the it. computer. Like I, I mean, yeah, I yeah. put clothes on because I don't want to work in no pajamas. You know, but I always just throw on some sort of sweatpants or something and some fuzzy socks. Right. And I say, <laughs> right. I That's what I'm God, saying. Nobody right. say turn your camera on because I'll be like, oh well. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you can. We have to turn ours on, you know, uh, and it's you know, pretty cool, but I, I'm like, wow. I was so happy. I was just been doing it only two months, but I've heard about everybody because I was in the car industry, so I was on the essential personnel, so we we never stopped working. We right. stayed, you know, the whole time, you know, and I was the very first week back in March of 2020, I was like masked gloves i was one of the first ones and i remember telling my boss i was like man I'm, I'm gonna wear some masks and gloves man you know i ain't trying to offend nobody he's like hey no you do what you gotta do you know but everybody there was still all oh, i ain't gonna wear no mask and then of mm -hmm. course months later everybody's got masks. but it's so interesting now that we've gone through all that and now we gotta try to get back to you know because the mask mandates are being dropped a lot of places and you know we we ain't been halfway wearing them everywhere anyway but that's something that's going to be very interesting as people are actually now having to go back to the office okay. and resume your your in-person lifestyle you know that you just actually found out you didn't like anymore you know, no. for last mm -hmm. week. <laughs> you know, so it's going to be But you know what kills me about that? Um, I know that lots, a lot of times um, companies are, you know, so um, inclined to, to think business as usual. But what, and, and I'm going to say this, I know Keisha, you, you know, you need to be in front of the children. You know what I mean? Because learning is, um, you know, you got to, be able to decipher who's getting what and so you can you know um you know take care of your teaching kids but i will say just in business people have been out of the office for two years two plus years now and um there's a statistic that says that productivity has actually increased now i will tell you when i go into the office i feel like i get less done than when i'm sitting home because a couple things is i don't take like um multiple breaks you know like when you're in the office you can get up you walk around you do you know people come to you talking that's time people don't know how time lapses. you know what i mean so a lot of things um i'll say that, that are distractions i think i have more going into the office so um a lot of companies know they people have been very productive in the COVID era but they refuse refuse 
to say, it's nothing wrong with you work at home. You know what I mean? It, we still are getting the same um, amount of work from you. It's nothing wrong with that, you know? So I think that we, we're going into a different type of um, environment because I, I know some of the agencies, they went to the one day of work, but before my telework policy was one day telework every pay period, which is every two weeks. So you only got one day to stay work at home. Well, people were leaving the agencies because they were going to agencies who were giving more telework. They were, it's like almost mm -hmm. people were jumping from place to place to see where they can stay home and work from home. Um, I worked for the, you know, the Department of Defense before. So most of the buildings are owned by them is, of course, you know, military buildings are owned by so on. Now, now we're for Veterans Affairs. And this is probably a lease building because everything is new and modernized and stuff. Like when I worked for the army, you, I worked on the base. So you already know what was there. And those things are not going to be effective because you think about it, hell, they're going to use that for something. You know what I mean? But um, I don't know. I don't think that resources are being used wisely. And then they complain about, um, you know, people not wanting to be working you know what i mean and i think a lot of things are still happening we could say post covid but I, i'm gonna say this much in philadelphia the mass man day, day is coming back oh so that tells you something people they, gonna riot they ain't wearing them no more well I, I don't know you can take that or take your, your your ass and be sick you know what i mean but the, when you come in a restaurant you better eat when slip it down a little bit and chunk it in there because the mass mandate is coming back and it has to be coming back because something is on the rise. If the TV media is not telling you something's on the rise, you wouldn't have a late, large metropolitan city bring the mass mandate back. You see what I'm saying? And they were one of the last ones to put it down. But so this leads into our topic because imposter syndrome is, um, I just did a lot of research on imposter syndrome because I don't think I'm just going to ask you guys what you guys think the imposter syndrome is. Well, I had to look <laughs> look it up. I was like imposter syndrome. I know the word imposter mean you think you're a fraud or mm -hmm. whatever, but I never heard of that imposter syndrome. And I was like when I looked it up and was researching, I said, "Oh, okay, that's self sabotage." And I was just using the word self sabotage, not knowing. And so I learned something. Mm -hmm. um even the definition of it so mm -hmm. yeah so that is um thinking that you um not capable or that whatever you do is by luck or by chance or um uh, it's really not your skills and you just um you feel like you're faking yep that you hit it on the button keisha um <clears throat> i'm gonna tell you when i first yeah, did this yeah. so go ahead, sorry, go ahead go ahead Jay. no i was gonna say um to what exactly what Keisha was saying. My initial response was, is somebody projecting an image of something that they are not? That's mm -hmm. what I thought, you know? A person can't stop doing that. But as I did, like you all, I'm like, well, let me just do some research and find out about it. It is extreme self-doubt. It's mm -hmm. like you, you, you severely are self-doubting yourself and that you just aren't you know, uh, uh, worthy of these accomplishments and things like that. So that's, I'm like, wow. Mm -hmm. I, I can't say I've ever met anyone that way that I knew that's the way they were. You know, I've heard some people that are self-doubt easily and even self-criticize at times. Maybe they are uh, suffering from imposter syndrome, but I, I never thought it was something that would be related to self-doubt. I but do you think that that self that um the imposter syndrome is when they just think of it uh think of themselves as a fake or fraud across the board or is it more so because just think about different things in our life at certain moments you might have self-doubt moments but not consider yourself a fraud as far as your whole being right is that a that's difference a good point. that's a difference I, I yes, think I think so. On a button. I think I think it is a difference. Um, yes, I think that what what kind of drew me to this topic was um, the first thing I thought about what the way you thought of it, Jay, is that people just take on a persona of somebody else and they're faking it, and and mm. you know they they're taking on a whole different identity. Um, 
I'm not saying that that can't be it because if you don't, if you have a lot of self doubt in yourself, you can almost acclimate yourself to be something that you're not, but you're, you're still not comfortable with it because you know, you don't have the skill set to be that. That's why I think that's kind of, a, it's a correlation. You know, um, I think we all suffer with imposter syndrome mm -hmm. in, some, in some way because I mean, like I know a lot of people who have a lot of confidence in themselves, but talk to them a little bit in deep, in depth, you will see something is going to come out that shows you that they're doubting something, but they, if they build a relationship with you, they're doubting something about themselves that um, normally they, um, people with input per, uh, will relate that type of syndrome to them. And I hate to beat the this 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 crap over the head because um I'm kind of getting a little irritated with it but I don't know when this episode come out it probably be flat and, and gone and nobody talking about Will Smith and Chris Rock but I think that when you live in um, a celebrity status I think a lot of them have imposter syndrome and you find out that they are um, having all this doubt of who they think they are and then it comes out when something terrible happens. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. that's how I um kind of relate the imposter syndrome to too because when I think about like Will, um you know people look at him as um before this incident as a really nice guy and he is a really nice guy. Um I think a lot of times when you really want to do what's right, you try your best to do what's right. But I think a lot of times you can almost trick yourself to thinking that um you're doing something right but you still don't have the things that you need to um take care of yourself you don't have the things you need to deal with trauma you don't have the things to deal with um emotional um abuse that you may have been through or you you're, you're lacking in emotional intelligence you know and you you have a struggle to be what people think you are so you take on things that are not really your your um your your so so-called personality so that's my thought on it um but when i say a lot of us have it i think a lot of us have it. i think i have it every day when i i i work you know what i mean i work in a new environment and i don't know their processes i'm just learning it. so but i'm at the point you know this favor saying i'm faking it till i make it because i'm gonna make well, it what well, well, to make that what you're saying as far as work is concerned, you in a new job, it's kind of like a learning curve. You, 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 you just catching up with the learning curve. It's a big learning curve. So of course you feel like an imposter because everybody knows this and I should know it. But like I tell, like when I tell my kids and they're going on a job interview or whatever, I, and I was like, you don't have to know everything. You just have to have the ability to, to know, to do the job because they're going to train you and you're going to learn that. And then it's, right. it's going to be okay. That's exactly. a really good point. Yeah. It makes me feel better. I'll be. I'll, I'll think about you, Keisha, Monday morning. Because um, <laughs> yeah, that's just a, it's just a learning curve. When I have a to lot of processes at work. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Same well. thing. So, how do you guys feel about the imposter syndrome when it comes to relationships? Because that's huge. Yeah. Um, well, that's something. It will. If you're doubting yourself you know that could be a turnoff okay you, you you're doubting yourself and that's true uh you you're you know say a man is giving you compliments and you're not wanting to take the compliments you know i'm reading here they're talking about some of the symptoms and signs right and it's funny because you're just talking about relationships because you know the it inability to realistically like, right right yeah like an inability to realistically assess your competence and skills right um mm -hmm. That's like you, you, you know, you you compliment, say, hey, you you look nice, you have a nice house here, you like you take care of your home, you got nice things or whatever. And you're like, oh no, you know, that's that's that was not me. I don't have nothing to do with that. You know, I'm gonna be looking at you like, ain't this your place? Ain't this your place? I mean, like, you know, berating your performance, fear that you won't live up to expectations. That's something mm -hmm. definitely in the relationship because you're 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 going to hold yourself back because you just don't think you have the capability to live up 
So yeah, that, that could really ruin, ruin relationships. Uh, you know, Kimmy, you're talking about what you're saying. Like I do believe too, a lot of celebrities are struggling somewhat with imposter syndrome, um, even though they have won many accolades. And I think sometimes because some of them try to trying to be very humble that you're, you know, you're, you're trying to be very, very modest sometimes. And you're like, oh, no, no, that's not me. You know, uh, I just try my best, you know, that kind of thing. And you're killing the game. So, you know, some of them are just trying to be humble. But that is, I think, does correlate with celebrities. And and as you said, if you you struggling big time, it it will affect the relationship. Yeah, because you, mm-hmm. you know. Nobody, nobody wants will, anybody to do with yeah, you, right. You, you, you got not, that. Thank you. Right. It, you doubting it's yourself. Not a turn all the time. on. It's a turn no. on. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna throw it to y'all another way. What we talk about right now, self sabotage. You know what I mean? Because that's what you do when you you start taking on this imposter syndrome. But imposter syndrome is just what it can be too. People being something that they're not. You know what I mean? Really, there's layer to to saying, okay, yeah. Um, let's talk about like a relationship. Um, you have a lot of things that have happened to you in prior relationships. And this probably mm-hmm. leans more towards women, I say, because um, women are more of the feely type of people. Let me not doubt men because you can really lay me out, Jay. But I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lay you out. If you're stating that women are more emotional, that's a fact. More emotional. More emotional. Yeah, so it's, it's sometimes emotions, um, being emotional, it can carry along into other relationships, other areas that um, have, you know, currently have um, passed. So I know people that intentionally um, set their, their, I guess their, um, how can I say this? Intentionally make their self to look like they are so well put together because, because, they're so afraid what people may think about all of the things that have occurred to you. Cause that's imposter syndrome too, because it doesn't mean you just have to always put yourself in a predicament to others to say that, Oh, it's, I'm not doing well and stuff like that, because that's, that's a lot of times other type of things going on. But what about the person that puts their self together as being uh, well put together, have lots mm-hmm. of mental issues going on and they can almost um, morph into somebody who is not. But eventually it comes out and they end up not having, um, or it doesn't come out. Let me just say this because that sounds crazy because it doesn't come out, but they constantly hide and they're unhappy. You see what I'm saying? They're constantly putting on a lot of facades and they're not happy because they feel like, if someone discovers that this and this and this is is, is areas of, of, of opportunity for me, I'm going to be um, critiqued in another way. Or I'm going to have that person probably try to mirror that same relationship before. Because I had a friend who was just like that. You know, she did so much extra in a relationship. But behind the closed doors, she would talk to me about all these things that she could not do. She was almost torturing her own self because she was too afraid to come out and say, well, um, I don't, I don't want to want to discuss th- this incident that happened between I'm just being, I guess, but I guess she felt shame or people, I won't use that, but people feel ashamed or they feel like they're going to be looked at as less than yeah. um, other people when you compare it to your, your circle. Uh, I better not let them know this because they're going to say this and that about me. But I mean, yeah. you know, the biggest one that yeah. you may not even realize it's an imposter syndrome, mm-hmm. a perfectionist. Mm-hmm. Everything has well, to be lined you know, up and be right before you make a move. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And again, what, let me just say this for the sake of being on the porch and our listeners, we're absolutely correct about what imposter syndrome is. However, we can have our different interpretations, Mm -hmm. right? Because as I was saying, or I like to say what in the streets, if somebody say you're an imposter, you are a fraud. You are. Okay. (laughs) Your ass is straight up a fraud. You are Mm -hmm. not what you present yourself as. 
Yeah, like somebody. So I understand that. Yeah. Yeah. Or something yeah. Like that. yeah. Right. It, it's just like you know, and you're right. In relationships or uh, people do in everyday walks of life, create this facade mm -hmm. and live this facade. You know, every single day, uh, and yeah. and 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 deep down inside, they're broken. So you were talking about earlier, like being a woman and having feelings and emotions, or some of the things from previous relationships. Mm -hmm. um, not because we all have things we have experienced, right? But if we do not take the time to process those experiences and and work on healing from those experiences, mm -hmm. then that becomes baggage that we carry with us, and then you know we call it the monkey on our back. We right. self medicate it with you know, all kind of things trying to cover it up. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it is, uh, I don't know what the technical term for it is, but you're mm -hmm. right. That is a form of an imposter that we know you put on this whole front um, for your your life because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and this is why I advocate when I talk to people about life coaching is the one thing that really becomes to lib is very liberating is when no one else's opinions or thoughts of you matter matter and and and, and di dictate what you do yeah okay mm -hmm. and and that is when you really start becoming liberated yeah but when you, you're still you're still worried about how you just uh, like said yeah. keisha you know other people what they're gonna think about me you know they know or you know i even had somebody tell me one time um uh, i was talking and they said yeah i was talking and you know i was telling them uh, yeah i didn't want to tell them you've been to prison twice i'm like Okay, uh, well, I mean, first of all, I ain't got no problem telling them, but I go around and talk about this every day. Mm -hmm. um, so you somebody know, else said publicly. it. What did, what did got, yeah, yeah. What they so, got? Okay. Well, yeah, like is uh, in other words, like you think that, and I said this too, and really, which is the number one thing, anybody that will have a problem being around me because I've been to prison twice, that's not somebody I want to be around anyway. Absolutely. So this is why I say, you know, we have to start living life and healing from these things that are causing us to want to be a perfectionist and create this facade and uh you know and it begins you said the other key word too keisha is shame because shame of that and what we've gone through won't we won't become compassionate enough to acknowledge it mm -hmm. so that we can so we can start working on it you know and that's the part where uh especially in the black community you know we struggle with that because nobody wants to talk about mental health mental illness you know uh, and behavioral health, anything like that, uh, in the black community, you know, and it's a very unfortunate, you know, because it's been generational. It's like that generational hush hush thing. Yeah. Because my I ain't gonna say nothing wrong with me, because my mom ain't never said nothing wrong with her, <laughs> and grandma, <laughs> grandma sure as hell ain't say nothing wrong with her, you know. So that's what I see with the generational hush hush about the stigma of that conversation. So we can start healing, you know, and operating more in our authentic selves, being our best version. Our best version of ourselves is when you love yourself unconditionally. You know, you find that purpose and passion in life. And you no longer worry about what nobody think of you or say I think of you. That's the biggest you know? Know? When you don't care about what nobody thinks. But I think when we think about imposter syndrome, um, I'm like you, Jay, I thought about people in the, what the streets say it, then the imposter is. Like, you know, um, he um, is playing like he a doctor or something and he is right. really ain't never exactly. been medical school you know he right and look i'm telling you i know somebody like that that played yeah. it off and and they did not um they had me fooled i was looking them up in the directory i was going to come and visit them but never um have they even visited that hospital you know but you know maybe that's called just psychotic but that's what i thought yeah because i was like is that teetering in, into another thing if they pretend right. it was a, a whole doctor yeah. and they were not and um i was watching and i don't even watch dr field but it just came on my tv and i just like stop it's so interesting this morning i was watching something um dr field and this lady actually pretend that she had cancer <gasps> only because she wanted sympathy she felt like she didn't, and they went through this whole, she went through this whole facade until one of her friends finally called her out on it. What? Friend or family member, called, really, she went for a year, for 13 months. 
Mm. And she did the process of shaving her head and faking doctor's appointments, being there just like you'll go to the hospital and you just snap a picture um, of yourself, like with the hospital sign or something near you, so <laughs> like that. But and so Dr. Phil was asking her why. She's like, I just decided in a moment. He said, No, now it's premeditated when you you had all these opportunities to get off that off ramp <laughs> and you stayed on. You kept <laughs> on down the highway with this. And so that was very, very, very disturbing, but very interesting that she did that. And I, and I was like, I'm not going to finish this. She's going to have some terrible karma get her. Oh, yeah. something like, what in the world is wrong with you? But yeah, and a friend oh, shaved her head and they had a fundraiser. Oh. And they had tattoos oh, her name, with her. Um, I want my money back. I'm what they say, you said it, they're going to look I'm at their good. tattoo and say sucker because you, you fooled them. You me back. <clears throat> but yeah and then, yeah that's what they're going to do and he said well what did you do with the money and she said well i pay i, I had car payment or whatever the bills or whatever that she she did that but yeah well, you're gonna have to give me a ride that. to work for a month straight for my longer than that <laughs> I gave you. yeah <laughs> you know you'll get locked up for that yes that's fraud i mean and i should have watched the end just to see what did she get locked up did she get time but I, I don't. I was like, this is not, let me turn from this. What the hell? But well, yeah. I, 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 I was yeah. saying something yeah. like, you know what? Um, an imposter syndrome that I probably could take on for myself, like when I was younger. You know what I mean? I will always play like I was like kind of quiet and spoken, but everybody already know I'm not. They give me about two weeks, and that's gonna fall to the side because not that I'm not quiet. I I am an introverted person, if people believe it or not. But I would do a lot to um be talking and active but not really um you know over the top and then someone could perceive it as like well why are you so kind of like withdrawn it's not that I'm withdrawn I'm just like a a different kind of people person I, I'll just say you know I deal with people because most of the time I have to deal with people but I love my alone time too so I, I can see that um I've been an imposter too. I think probably everybody has been. So an you're impostering that. So you, you don't like be being friendly. Is that what you're saying? You have to be friendly because initially, I know initially, Kim, you ain't gonna say nothing to nobody. You're Philly straight up. So you, you know, you a new stranger. You ain't just getting friendly, friendly with them. No, but, but I see what you're saying. saying. When I when I first like meet somebody and I like them, then right. I'm friendlier and stuff like that. I said I'm not right. friendly because when people know me, they know that I'm a a genuinely friendly person, but I have a very close circle because I'm not a extroverted type of person. You know what I mean? I, I don't like to be around a lot of people. It's not my comfort zone. And, you know, like me and my husband are polar opposites completely. Keisha, you know, mm -hmm. he, is just, he can gravitate to anybody. He loves to talk. I don't like to talk. You know what I mean? A lot. Like I, I'm just... That's just not my thing. I don't like to break out new conversation and it takes you um, to almost force yourself. You see what I'm saying? So that, it, because maybe I have a little self-doubt here and there, but it's not my comfort. And I think that in, the being in an imposter syndrome, because you're not comfortable with something, it can force you to um, take on that syndrome. But I mean, y'all know. So Jay, what was you saying about people from Philly? What are you talking about? Y'all ain't just going to warm right up to nobody. Philly, New York, all them places. You know, because when I was up there and I'm speaking to everybody, you like, you better stop speaking to everybody. You know, I, you don't know them, but but I'm just saying, you know, it, it's you not get, a bad thing. No. It's just, it's just <laughs> right. Exactly. It's not a bad thing because in the South, we are more friendlier. Okay, uh, so let me give you a perfect example. To, to, when, to, I you know, south, yeah. when I move down right. south, when I move down south, and people used to speak to me in the supermarket. I used to look at them like, why are these people speaking all the time? Something is wrong. See? These are some shady right. people. You know what I mean? See? But that was just the culture of the Southern well, That's race. why I'm saying the Philly girl ain't speaking. No, I'm not. Y'all ain't saying nothing to nobody. Y'all ain't. No. <laughs> you don't know you. I don't know you. We you trying to talk to me for? <laughs> so that's why I had to like almost get myself acclimated into 
being, right, you know, right. a part of my environment because, and that still doesn't take the the com- the uncomfortableness away because now that I'm back home, I'm just back to normal. I don't you don't speak to me. I don't speak to you. You know what I mean? So, so the moral, but one thing to kind of com- combat the imposter syndrome is when you connect. Think about when you ever go to a meeting or just um, something in general that is just a large crowd and you're in a conference, whatever. Yeah. And say, when you get in there and you're the only one that's representing whatever you're representing, when you get in there, you're automatically going to try to find someone that you have a connection with. You might be going to get someone. Are you from, oh yeah, oh well, we're going to sit beside you. Or you're going to try to find that connection somewhere to somebody uh, in something. It might be, girl, you got your, yeah, I got you whatever and that's that's how you kind of combat that um imposter syndrome because you want to get comfortable in the situation that you're in. comfortable comfortable that's everything um but you know i i don't care now because i'm back home you know <laughs> you know right so it's easy to, to imposter friendliness when you have to right yeah because I, I don't want to be <laughs> Uh, I get it too, you know, because it's it's something, man. But that is true in all facets of life and different things that we we may have some anxiety and self doubt about. Really, can fall under a little imposter syndrome. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if it's more what you were saying to to your point earlier, Keisha, you was like, "Are we that way?" Or in the moment, you know, I think it's really more defined if you're all that way about everything all the time yeah because i think circumstances sometimes come around and we may have a little self-doubt sometimes Mm -hmm. you know and and there's some things sometimes you know it's good to have a little self-doubt because maybe you use some discernment and be like no i shouldn't probably cut that tree down by myself over there Uh, (laughs) because i'm gonna cut it down on my neighbor's yard and hit his house if it fell so the self-doubt sometimes is good you know, but I think if it's a consistent sometimes thing. it can be stuck, can um keep you stuck. For instance, right. I'm talking about myself, and because I have like two business things that I'm just in the middle of, mm-hmm. and they're like I'm afraid to actually move one because this is what hangs me up. I don't like I like working through processes. I don't like setting up processes. So mm-hmm. this takes some setting up some two things that I need to set up and it's very difficult because I can't wrap my mind around it so I let Mm. myself stay stuck and I'm like in a hovering pattern of two great things that could be going on right now in my life that have some great rewards but I'm stuck there because I cannot figure this one thing out and it's just more than a it's just a phone call or something because the people I'm dealing with is on the um, um, uh, another time zone, so every time they meet, I can't meet. I'm either in, I'm either at work, you know, like oh, they having a meeting, or I'm just the time never sets up. So they're just chugging along, and I feel like I'm way back. But I'm a, I'm afraid to actually call the person's like I need some one on one so I can move through this yeah, process. I, I can be that. with you. I know the skill. Mm-hmm. I just can't get over that hump. And another thing is I need to set up something and I don't, I don't know how to set it up. I want to set up so I can move through what I need to do once I right. get over that hump. So that leaves me in a hovering pattern. I figure a lot of people might be stuck in a situation and they just, and it's just a pattern, just something that, you know, and that's bad. That's a bad thing. It, it, it is. But let me say this. Can you just, you know what, just like you got to pay your, your mortgage um, this month, mm-hmm. you need to write down, I have to reach out to so-and-so so I can set up one-on-one time at this time. Because the only thing that, that can ever stop anybody is somebody saying no, and you already have that anticipated in your head. You know what I mean? So I would say this, this is what yeah, I- Yeah, because I feel like, I'm. I, oh, you gonna feel like, well, I have everything out for you. Why can't you do this? So yeah. that's <laughs> kind of like a self- yeah, uh, uh, imposter syndrome. Like I'm feeling like, oh, I'm not gonna be adequate. I don't want him to think of me as not being able to to hang. Because once I like, get I'm it, not I'm not competent. The best right. Of them. Yeah, right. That's what I'm saying, right. and, that, and I can guarantee you that. And I, and I hate that. That's I, I don't, yeah, yeah. So, so like I said, just like you got to do, uh, you got a whole bunch of must happens 
This is and mm-hmm. I say to do must happen. We all got must happens that must occur every week or every month. You need to put this down as a must happen because guess what? If you deal with that person and say, reach out to them, hey, um, I'm just a little stuck right here and I just want to get you to, you know, let me show you what I, where I'm at and help me along the way if you don't mind. Um, you'll learn a lot about that person too. You see what I'm saying? And I think that you will discover that they're not um, there to judge you. You know what I mean? They'll, they want you to be successful because guess what? Ultimately, if you're successful, the whole program is successful. This, so, is, this is yeah. true too. And I, and I know this because I'm a teacher and, and no question is a dumb question. No question. And that's right. the thing. And then I'm doing, right. I'm like, I was like, I'm not You're even not practicing what you I preach. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's that's important, Keisha, because you know you you are on the road. And I always say I'm not gonna throw throw you know religion in here, but I am. The devil come when you almost near success and mm-hmm. throw it right, out in your right, mind yeah. and start start playing with your head and start saying, I'm gonna wait and this and you know what? When you wait a whole year to pass, and then oh, I'm, oh, I'm so tired when I get home. I just can't yeah. do that. I wait for another day. It's yeah. like I wake up in the morning and I do. I wake up at four thirty two and I do yoga, mm-hmm. and then I have an intentional word. It might be focus. It might be happy. It might whatever. And I said, oh, I feel good. Well, I like to do stuff early in the morning. I feel good. I'm gonna get this done and whatever. And then by the end of the day, my energy is drained. I don't want to work on that project. I start tomorrow. And tomorrow never comes. Nope. Right. Nope. Mm. So yeah, yeah, there's that discipline. That's that other word we got to have, mm-hmm. that discipline, right? Yes. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, but I love what you're saying, set the attention. That's yeah. important, to set the intention. That's um, intention. really important. Here's something that we didn't really kind of talk about, but they they when I was reading about the imposter syndrome, uh-huh. that they said it's very prominent and high-achieving yeah. careers. I right. Players, yeah. Yes. So too. it's like, yeah, you know what I mean. So it's like you already at a level of success anyway mm-hmm. that you've achieved. Yeah. Right. Whatever it is your career is, um, you probably had a level of schooling and training and experience to get to where you are mm-hmm. to be a high level achieving kind of person. Mm-hmm. So to still having you know, reach that some in some cases probably the pinnacle, right? Mm-hmm. And still having self doubt, yeah, mm-hmm. and still not feeling adequate or deserving, as they were saying, of the accolades. Well, you know what? You know, I, I'll give you an I wonder if it's a bonus check and they're just giving the bonus check back. They, this, that's, <laughs> I'm, you gonna get a bonus help, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna give you an example. Sometimes, um, sometimes other people could make you feel that you're having imposter syndrome because of they are having an imposter syndrome. Um, and I say this because and y'all probably can relate to this. When I went for my new job that I'm in now, um, I had only been at my, my old duty station three years. Okay. So, you know, sometimes it's a mindset, you know what I mean? Where, People think that, well, you need to serve uh, more time in a position before you try to go to the next level. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, So when I went to um, interview for my uh, position I'm in now, I told no one. And when I got the job, because I was like saying to myself, okay, well, you know what? I know I'm ready because I know everything that I did in the position up to this point. And um, I'm ready to go to the next level. I know I I don't want to wait for it at my that current duty station because I know it wasn't coming no time soon. And I always thought it was a lot of political things going on at that station. So I said, I'm apply somewhere else. I did the interview and I said, worst case scenario, guess what? I'm gonna get some really good feedback, you know what I mean, to prepare me for when I'm ready to take the, the next level. Okay. Um, lo and behold, it went really fast, Keisha and Jay. Like I interviewed like the last week in October um, and y'all know the government never fast with nothing. And I got a response back of, of a job offer the second week in November. So mm-hmm. now I had to go to my boss and told my boss was so cool. He was, he, I, I mean, I, I miss him tremendously because he was so cool. He was like, there is no 
thinking of I should take this position because this is a promotion and you need to take this position. You need to take it because you only grow when you are forced to be in a, in a changing situation. And it stops you from doubting yourself because guess what? Right. You're forced to get acclimated to the new changes and you grow from it. You don't grow when you stay in the same position and start doubting yourself. That's mm-hmm. what he told me. But when the imposter syndrome came in where I was getting feedback from people that I used to work with because they didn't do what I did and was like, well, people are thinking that maybe um, they say you're really smart and you do a lot of different contracts in here because you you just we know you had a lot of things that we didn't have, but they said that maybe they hired you because you have a master's degree, right? I was like, um, that wasn't even on the, the prerequisites. But you see how the, the 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 doubt comes and you know what I mean? And then I start thinking like, was that the reason why they hired me? No, absolutely not. That's not why they hired me because in the question of the interview, none of those things was asked of me. You see what I'm saying? Um, I think it was just probably a bonus, but everything that was asked of me, I could do. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I was not in a in a state where I was doubt myself at first, but someone came and said something to me and made me start doubting myself. And then I said, uh-uh, no, because... At the end of the day, I want to be an encouragement to someone else to think, if you know what you can do, be confident in what you can do and move forward and do what you need to do. Because other people can make you feel like you're in the imposter syndrome. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, wow. yeah, that was that was just an aha to me. And I, I say this to, you know, you explain this to I you. think, but Tim... I think in that situation, I think they were doubting themselves and saying, well, uh, this is because they didn't go after the job that you went after Mm -hmm. that, okay, you must have this, something that I don't have. And so I'll feel better because she has this and I don't have that. And that's why I didn't get it. And that's maybe not the case because they didn't go after what you went after. Yeah. But the, you you see, like it's so easy but to yeah. fall into but that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really, it's, <laughs> and, and I think that you know, if um, it's hard enough to work on yourself. You see what I'm saying? It's really yeah. hard to work on yourself. Um, and I I can relate to that because Keisha, I know, like when in the evening when I got to get stuff done for the for for let's just chat sis and stuff like that. Some days I'm just exhausted. You know what I mean? I feel like I can't do it and things like that and. You know, I start wishing some crazy shit that they never gonna happen, but um, like can they automate itself and you know, but I start thinking about what I do have. You see what I'm saying? I have great support, you know what I mean? Um, I got great co-hosts, you know, and I'm not I'm not gonna beat myself up about things that I know I already have, you know what I mean? Because the doubt comes in real quick, you see what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. I don't know if y'all look at lately, but um on Facebook, we up to nine thousand people. On, on Facebook. Wow. So I mean, wow. Like, share, describe, and subscribe. Yeah, that's some. Uh, that's something, Kimmy. I'm. I'm glad you're talking about that because I saw something that stuck with me, a statement, wow. and it said, "Um, when you doubt yourself, remember when you wanted what you have right now." Ooh, that's yes. a good one. Can you write that down? Need to post that. You see, and and that's something that. You know, you remember that mm-hmm. when you wanted what you have right now, mm-hmm. when you when you wanted that, that's a good and one. that right there. Yeah, you know, say it a little louder. Remember for the that. Yeah. Back. Say it a little louder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, that's, that's right. a good one. I really want you to to, to text me that because I'm gonna do a post. Okay, I will text it to you. Yeah, really, yeah, that's that's very yeah. important. You know what I mean? Just yeah, and, and exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so and it's like it's like a little twist to it. This is like remembering when you want it to be where you are right now. Oh, I like that. You know, yeah. mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, yeah. This, this. Remember that. Don't, don't. You know, for everybody and anybody. Well, remember Just the text. About that. <laughs> Make sure you remember to text me that. And, and I'm, I'm gonna do yeah. that right now. I'm gonna do that right now. <laughs> So um, I think this was a good episode. Keisha, you want to say something before we close up? Um, I lost my train of thought with that. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, Keisha. I, I, look, I'm going to take my jink over the night like I've been doing. So I can 
stay on a, 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 a hour <laughs> memory because you know um i haven't done it uh uh, episode on menopause. I keep putting that one off. I keep saying I'm gonna do it next month. Then when I look at my schedule, it never fits in. But I'm gonna get that one in here because I, I think that you know um, people want to hear about this 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 uh thing called menopause because mm-hmm. ooh, I, I think the biggest thing that memory loss stuff ooh, is it, it makes you it makes you doubt. Um, so in closing, um, final remarks. Keisha, what's your final remarks on in, in process? Okay. F- final remarks. Um, I would say experiencing doubt is normal. Mm-hmm. However, the important thing is to not to let that doubt control your actions. Absolutely. Jay, get to myself. I I echo those sentiments, actually, Um, you know, imposter syndrome, understanding what it actually means um, is, is that is really um, self-doubt. And it's kind of weird, you know, when I think about the high achieving, because I visualize that's a person with the big corner office, you know, the big salary and all the accolades on the wall. And um, Mm -hmm. so in spite of all of those outwardly um, uh, things that are a result of your your ability, you're still questioning it. Still uh, so I, I don't, yeah, yeah. So I just want to encourage everybody, everybody, as what you said, just believe in yourself and, and all that you have going on in there. Just speak, speak life into yeah. to yourself. And, um, you know, because I believe we will manifest the thought, the conversation we're having between our ourselves and our minds. That's what will ultimately manifest. So, absolutely. And as far as the fraud imposters, stay away from me. <laughs> fake asses, whatever. You know, uh, and we call them scammers and everybody else now. But you know, the the, the street imposters and all that. I see you coming a mile away. So anyway, <laughs> Jay, we uh, said game recognized game. Yes, yes, game that's right. That's game. right. Game recognized game. You know, um, but. Uh, to each, to each day on, just love who you are, and the, you know, and, and just walk in that purpose in life and be confident Absolutely. About it, you know? hmm That was a good one. So in closing, everybody, please join us every Wednesday back on the porch when we drop a new episode. You can always catch us on our social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, I'm your girl, Kimmy, and joining me tonight is... I'm your girl, Keisha. This is JB from NC. Everybody have a good week on purpose and we'll see you next week.